So it's winter, it's cold and flu season. I'm going to tell you in this video exactly what you need to do to heal from the cold or flu quickly and without spending any money. So before I share the five things you need to do to get better fast, I need to say a couple things about sickness in general because as a culture, we have a very negative view on sickness. As soon as something comes on, we freak out, rush to the doctor, get an antibiotic, and we also view colds and flus as a very random thing. We say, oh, it's just a cold and flu season, or I caught it from so-and-so. And you can catch things from people, but it doesn't change the fact that if you caught something, your body was not able to defend itself. Therefore, your body is not well. We also like to blame it on the cold weather. But for hundreds of years, people in other cultures have known that the cold is actually healing to the immune system. And there's a guy named Wim Hof who has actually been proving for the past 10 years that the cold is amazing for your health. Uh, the benefits include fat loss, reduced inflammation, uh, fortified immune system, balanced hormone levels, improved sleep quality, the production of endorphins, and the list goes on. The view that colds and flus are bad and need to be stopped immediately is so wrong. The sickness is actually our body initiating a healing response. It's a sign that your body isn't so jacked up that it can still initiate that healing response. So when we try to stop the symptoms by using all of the antibiotics and over-the-counter drugs, we're actually suppressing the body from cleansing and healing itself. We are trapping in the toxins and infections which are trying to get out and it pushes the sickness deeper inside the body. Our bodies know what to do and our bodies know how to heal themselves easily if we give them a chance, but we're not giving them a chance even remotely and especially in children. Um, and I get it, it's worrying when your child is sick, but when you understand how the immune system functions in the human body, you can relax and know that the body is just doing what it needs to do. And obviously you can monitor the child, track the symptoms if you need to, but for the most part, we need to stop intervening with the healing process. So let's get into it. These five things are guaranteed to accelerate the healing process, support your immune system to get rid of whatever it's trying to get rid of, and doing it this way will actually boost your overall health instead of pushing it deeper inside your body, only for it to reappear later on. And the best part about doing it this way is that you don't need any money for these five things. Number one is stop eating food. There's a reason why we lose our appetite when we get sick. It's because our body doesn't want us to eat. It's so busy trying to fight off foreign invaders to potentially save your life, the last thing it wants to do is waste precious energy digesting food. So don't eat junk food, don't eat healthy food, just don't eat. Um, even animals know to do this. When an animal is sick, they will crawl into the corner for a few days and they won't eat anything. Um, for some reason, we feel the need to force food, especially on sick children. We think that they need it because they're sick, but it's the last thing they need. The number one thing that you can do to prolong an illness is to eat food. A sick body cannot handle food. And fasting is so powerful. When you're sick, fasting is going to do more for your body than probably anything else. So just fasting alone, you'll usually completely kick whatever you have within a couple days. Hydration. Simple and I'm positive we all already know this one. So the body is using, losing a lot of fluid when you're sick and it needs all that extra hydration and to help flush out all the toxins that are leaving your body. Get in the sun. The sun is healing uh, beyond vitamin D. The sun has been demonized in this culture, and I'm definitely gonna do a video on this topic because I'm so passionate on this subject, but wrap yourself in a blanket, get out there, or better yet, lay near a big window in direct sunlight and expose as much skin as you can to the sun. Do not reduce a fever. Again, this is the body's healing response. This is a natural process of healing, and the body heats up to kill whatever it is that you're ill with, and all you're doing by reducing a fever is preventing your body from getting better. Again, you're trapping the virus or whatever it is in your body, and now the body has to continue to fight and find another way to get it out, and you stay sick. So you do not need to worry about a fever unless it gets above around 104 or 105. People don't die of fever. Um, any reports of people dying of high fevers are most likely cases of severe fatal dehydration. If the fever does get above around 104 or 105 and you're starting to feel nervous, uh, you can try to break it, but never use Tylenol or another over-the-counter fever reducer. Um, get in a bath, do an enema, but don't suppress the sickness by taking a drug. 
Um, I will also add, although this is a massive topic, why it is so imperative that you do not take an antibiotic. Antibiotics kill everything in its path and they wreak havoc on the gut. An antibiotic may wipe out your symptoms and make you feel better temporarily, but down the road you will end up sicker than before because you did not deal with the problem and the antibiotic just caused your immune system to be even weaker. Using natural products is going to give your body exactly what it needs, plus it's going to give it side benefits, not side effects. So antibiotics have side effects and they are not random. They are the direct effect of putting a toxic coal tar based petrochemical poison into your body. I know that sounds intense, but that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what people are taking every day and they think it's making them well. It is not making you well. It is making you sicker. It is taking away your symptoms, pushing the sickness down and making you sicker overall. Our bodies are really, really good at repairing themselves, but we need to give them the tools to be able to do that. And sleep is one of those crucial tools that the body absolutely needs to heal. So when you're sick, especially go to bed early, like eight or nine early. Uh, between nine and midnight is a crucial time that your body does some intense healing and repairs. And if you're awake during that time, you miss out on all of it. So those are my five tips on how to heal for fast and free. If you follow those guidelines, you have an amazing chance of healing so much quicker and you supported your body through the process and allowed the sickness to leave without just suppressing it with a medication. Now, if you really want to accelerate the healing process and support your body even more, here are my top holistic healing remedies that I personally use in my home and you can use these things even when you're not sick to just support your overall health in general. Oregano oil is one of the most powerful antibiotics on the planet, one of the most powerful natural antibiotics on the planet. It has potent antibacterial, antiviral, and antifungal properties, and um, it has an antiviral component that helps to inhibit viral replication. I just make a little roller vial with um, a carrier oil like jojoba, and just you only need a couple of drops of the oregano oil. It is super powerful. And then you can just roll it on the bottoms of your feet and that will send it directly to your bloodstream to work its magic. Apple cider vinegar. Um, Bragg's brand is great, but I like this raw coconut vinegar. I just like the taste a little bit better. It's another one of the most healing things you can put in your body and it's really cheap. Um, I could write a book on all the benefits of apple cider vinegar, but um, as it relates to cold and flu, it, it kills bacteria, viruses. It can also thin out mucus. Lemon. Lemon is also very healing. Um, you can just add this to the apple cider vinegar with some water or you can use it alone. Um, it's part of my morning routine to drink a juice of a lemon uh, with some vitamin C and the coconut vinegar. Um, it's such a powerful health tonic and also something that you could just take every day to maintain your health. Lay. It's amazing. Like, I don't even know what to say about this. It's just so incredible. Um, the mineral composition of the human body is very similar to the Earth's crust. In Genesis, it says, the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the Earth. It's literally what we are made out of. And there are not many things on Earth that are more healing to the human body than clay. There are around 200 cultures around the world that eat dirt every single day. And for hundreds of years, people have been eating clay and they know that it heals them. When an animal gets sick, it goes to a clay bed, it licks the clay and it doesn't eat anything else until it's better. Um, so the way clay works is that contaminants are positively charged. Clay is negatively charged. So heavy metals, toxins, infectious organisms, bacteria, fungus, parasites, um, all are drawn into it like a magnet and the clay absorbs it like a sponge and takes it out of the body. Clay's drawing power is absolutely insane. And once a contaminant is bound into the clay, there's, it's there for good and it cannot reabsorb into your body and then it leaves through your waste. Vitamin C. And everyone knows to take vitamin C when you're sick, right? But what most people do not know is that absorbic acid, which is what most, most synthetic forms of vitamin C is, is uh, derived from corn. And I won't go into it too much, but we should not be putting absorbic acid into our bodies. Um, this is the brand that I use um, and I do not think that there's another brand that compares to this one. Um, this is a natural vitamin C that comes directly from wild harvested plants and berries. Um, and the body knows what to do <laughs> with this stuff. The body does not know what to do with absorbic acid. I cannot rave enough about how fast 
you will feel results after doing this. I have personally had migraines disappear immediately after doing one of these. Um, it can break a fever and overall can just speed up the body's healing process considerably. So mucoid plaque can be the root cause of hundreds of named diseases. And when you eat junk food or even food that you may not think is clogging up your system, like wheat, dairy, grains, starch, oils, and so on, your body creates mucus to protect itself from all of that junk. Then the mucus hardens into this thick black stuff called mucoid plaque that sticks to your intestines. It's such a huge problem because our bodies absorb nutrients from the food we eat through the intestinal walls, but when your intestinal walls are coated with mucoid plaque, it doesn't matter what you eat, the nutrients can't be absorbed. So even if you're eating the most nutritious food in the world every single day, it's not going to absorb into your body if you have mucoid plaque on your intestinal walls. So it's incredibly important to cleanse that out. The average person carries around 5 to 10 pounds of dried, hard, old, rotting fecal matter in their bodies. I know, disgusting, but it's true. If you feel tired and run down all the time and you get headaches and infections and all sorts of reoccurring symptoms, you're probably full of crap. Think of all the hard black stuff that's on the bottom of a dirty pan. Scrubbing it doesn't do much, scrubbing it with fiber doesn't do much, but if you soak it in warm water, it softens and releases because water is the universal solvent. It can dissolve almost anything. So this is where the enema is so effective. I won't go over how to do an enema. You can look that up if you're interested in trying it, but basically you would put about a half gallon of water into an enema bag or bucket um, and lean over and you release the warm water into yourself. So with a half a gallon, you won't get any water into the small intestines, but you'll get it into your colon, which is really important. So you will be disgusted and shocked at what comes out. An extremely effective way to cleanse your colon and your small intestines is to get hydrotherapy, but it's quite expensive, around 50 to 100 a pop. So the enema bag or bucket is a great alternative, costs about $10, and you can reuse it over and over. I have personally used one for a year or so, every once in a while, and especially during cleanses. So we all know that honey has amazing healing properties. Manuka honey is superior um, because it has this special antibacterial effect called methylglyoxal, and along with that antibacterial effect, Manuka honey also has soothing anti-inflammatory properties, which can provide instant relief for sore throats and coughs. So you can add this to your lemon vinegar water, um, and I like it iced, um, so the, the vinegar, lemon, and Manuka honey, and it really doesn't taste bad because of the sweetness of the honey. Turmeric is another one of those amazing, insanely cheap remedies. Um, turmeric is a broad spectrum antimicrobial agent. It actually deactivates and destroys viruses. Um, there have been studies that prove that turmeric inhibits the activity of viruses and very small amounts of turmeric are even needed to deactivate and influence a virus. The last thing I want to share is that once you're healed, don't go back to the diet and lifestyle that made you sick in the first place. Uh, adopt some of these remedies and health tips into your daily life. and. You know, even if it's just starting the day with some lemon, apple cider vinegar water, um, you'll see some amazing benefits even just from doing one simple thing every morning. If you only use healing remedies when you're sick, you are eventually just gonna get sick again. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. If you liked the video, please subscribe and let me know in the comments what you thought. I'll see you guys next time.